morning. It is Wednesday morning. Uh, it is cold and dreary still here. The temperature from that cold front has dropped about 20 degrees to what it was, uh, you know, beforehand. Which, I mean, it's still tolerable because it's, you know, it's going to be in the, right now it's 44 and the high is going to be in the 50s today instead of the 70s. Which, that's typical March in Arkansas weather. Um, I am taking advantage of the less than ideal weather conditions to go ahead and go get the oil changed in my car at the co-op and have them look at my tire pressure sensor and then pick up some things that I need for the farm and pick up a couple of things that I need for the house and do my banking, you know, do all that errand running that you need to do. Um, yesterday, I just kind of rested and honestly, I'm still feeling pretty tired today. And I was thinking about the concept of rest and how rest, particularly in Western culture, is sort of vilified. Um, you know, we work typically five days a week, 40 hours or plus in some cases a week. And the idea of rest is kind of looked down on. When oftentimes if we would just rest or take a break we would come back and actually be more productive than being forced to work these very rigid schedules so i encourage my students you know i always tell them don't cram before a test it's not going to do you any good get you some good sleep and then get up and study for a couple hours and be done right but I encourage them to study a little bit every day, you know, work a little bit every day on something to kind of let it gradually absorb. It's like, you know, the water absorbing in from an intense, violent thunderstorm with lots of rain falling in a very short time. Most of that's not going to stick. It's going to run off. Whereas a days of rain that's very gentle, that's going to soak in and give you the groundwater that you need. I kind of use that analogy when I talk to my students. So, the other thing is, I have a personally interesting relationship with rest that I've been working on. And it's no secret that I'm in therapy. Y'all know this. I've talked about this before. Um, and one of the issues that, that recently came up was the concept of rest. And how I think it's a great concept, except for myself, or at least I did for a while because my I look at the what my dad did and my dad had a lot of good things about him and a lot of not so good things about him and a lot of pretty bad things about him um, but one of the things that he was is he was not an ambitious man he you know and he did not feel the need to do any more than the bare minimum to keep the place up and to keep the livestock okay and in some cases did not even do that <laughs> um, and I know that there were probably some underlying issues with that but what I saw was a man who would I, I it's what I would call very lazy he didn't he would rather listen to a baseball game or play cards then go out and try to fix the place, fix fence, or do whatever needed to be done. And so, as has been pointed out to me, very often generations sort of completely swing the other direction from what their parents did. Now, my mom worked her butt off because she was the reason we stayed afloat. But um, I think I kind of took the level of wanting to work to the extreme, and then you compound that on with the person I mentioned the other day in the video who was not so great saying that you know you should get up by this time and you need to get all these things done and your place looks terrible because you don't work hard enough and and I kind of internalized that I guess rest phobia I don't know what the right word is but I wasn't being productive if I wasn't turning my hand to something all the time and it sort of culminated, and I was telling this story the other day when I was in therapy, it culminated in me being outside. At, it was dark, you know, it was not, I, 
had been working all day. It was during spring break a few years ago. I had been working all day on something, and I was just worn out. I just give out. And I tripped in the garden, and I caught myself with my hand, and I rammed a piece of what I thought was, you know, a branch or something in up in my arm. I hit it just right. And I pulled it out. And, you know, it was, you know, two or three inches long. And I pulled it out. And, you know, it, it, it didn't da do any internal damage, but it, it went kind of inside along the skin or whatever. Well, then, that spot would never heal. It did not heal for months like two or three months later and I was at something in Little Rock and I was looking at that spot it hadn't healed up it was still open and I was messing with it and it wasn't healed on the inside either it had abscessed so I, you know go home and take a shower and push on it and about a four inch piece of metal comes out of my arm that's what I got for not resting. And that kind of, you know, spoke to me in the sense that you'll push yourself and you'll everybody will think you're fine on the surface, but you know inside something's not right. So I've had to change my relationship with the concept of rest. And I think especially women are prone to not wanting to rest because, you know, so many women work and our parents and are taking care of a household. I don't have those things. You know, I don't have a, a spouse or children to take care of, but I have my farm and I work. And so I think that having to have, a, I, I'm working on a healthier relationship with rest. And sometimes it's okay to sit or lay in the bed and read a book, you know, or work a crossword puzzle or you know, just knit on a sweater or something and not go outside and be productive. Even if the weather's pretty, even if there's no other reason other than you just need a break, I think it's okay to do that. So I think we need to explore our relationship with, with rest, especially here in the U.S. Um, and make it, rest is necessary. Rest is necessary. We need, to, we need a healthier relationship with rest here in the U.S. Well, they couldn't fix my tire pressure sensor, but I did get my oil changed. And look, I got me a grounding rod. This is a rebar fence post, but it'll work for a grounding rod. And the reason I wanted to get it is it's got the little stabilizers at the bottom. So I can move this around the yard with the pin. And I got some veggies to put in the garden. I got cold weather stuff to start with. Oh, they got their chicks today. <laughs> I had to, as soon as I opened the door, I heard him, and I'm like, no, no chicks. <laughs> oh, I love baby chicks, and they're adorable, but, oh, it's a hassle to raise them, and I just don't want to do that this year, so, anyway, <laughs> um, okay, more errands. Unload and feed. It's part of, part of it every week. <laughs> what? Huh? You telling the geese about it? You telling them those are your girls? Okay. Those are your girls. Well, it's not farm until somebody bleeds. <laughs> I should wear my gloves when I do things, but I forget. You know, oh well. Part of it. Hello, big boy. You like your new pen? Is that good? It's a good boy. Him's a big boy. Him's a big boy. Okay, well, um, I've been playing Pokemon Go with some friends of mine in Switzerland. Um, my friend Daggy and her wife Barb, I've met through geocaching, uh, but they play Pokemon Go, and uh, with the remote raiding, I get to raid with them in Switzerland, which is kind of nice. It's let me stay active in Pokemon Go, even though I don't have a big group here 
to play with. It's it's mostly geocachers from all over the world <laughs> that get together and and raid in Switzerland. So it's kind of fun. But while I was doing that, um, I applied the facing to my the bodice of my um, hope dress here. So I've got the facing applied. I need to apply the closure to the back here. Um, it has a loop and a button. I think I'm going to sew a hook. I don't know yet. We'll see. Uh, I don't like the loop that the pattern has. It's a little bit fumbly. So I'm going to do something different there. I'm going to go out and put hay out for my cattle. Mr. Ray brought me a bale of hay. So I'm going to go put hay out for the cattle. And then I'm going to come back and work on this dress for a while. Because it's very windy and cold outside. And it's just not a good day to try to get stuff done outside. Because what I need to do with it being windy would be very difficult to do. I need to trim limbs. I need to burn things. And... Um, I just don't feel like being out there. So I'm going to take advantage of the bad weather and I'm going to continue to sew. The other thing that I want to do is look for some yarn for the Naturalist Shawl by C.J. Brady. Uh, it calls for a sport weight. So I'm going to get in my stash and see what I can find uh, that would meet that requirements. I want something natural looking, you know, something not too bright, more muted tones, I think, for that. So uh, I'm going to get in my yarn stash and see what I can find. Someday, I'm going to hit the Powerball and I'm going to build me an equipment shed so that my stuff doesn't have to sit out in the weather. But until then, I'm going to have to charge the battery on my Ford every once in a while because it's incredibly cold natured. <laughs> All right, so yeah, I knew it was getting weak yesterday. It almost didn't start, so I knew this was coming today. But the cows are over here yelling at me, so I need to get it started so I can put this ballet out. Okay, so here are some things that I pulled to maybe do that naturalist shawl out of. We've got these two that I would use together. Or we've got this. Be more monochromatic. Or we've got this. This one is acrylic. This one is um, wool, mulberry silk, and nylon. And then this looks like some hand spun wool with some, with wool. This is all 100% wool. So, hmm, I don't know. Right now, I'm leaning toward this. And then I would stripe it, kind of. I don't know. This is, th these two are kind of, and then this would be a, another option. But I don't know yet. What do y'all think? The next piece on We Believe that I'm going to do is Healthcare is Right. So here is it. Let me show you a picture. So this is the next one. So I've been pulling out the floss for it and finishing the fabric. And um, this one's got a little bit more stitching on it than the other one. So this is going to take me a little bit longer. But hopefully I can make a good dent in it before the end of the month for Whipgo. I also uh, pulled some yarn uh, to make Mr. Ray some hats, and I talked to his daughter, and she said that she thought he would really like them. So I'm looking at a couple of patterns online uh, to make some hats for him. I thought I'd make a couple. I uh, might crochet one or two and then knit one or two or knit one and crochet a couple. I'm a faster crocheter than I am a knitter, so um, I just wanted to get something made for him as a thank you for helping me with the hay. So uh, my outside chores are done. Animals are all fed and watered and I'm gonna work on, I got my fabric prepped. I'm gonna take a little bit of a break to eat some lunch and then I'm gonna work on my dress some more, I guess. It's chilly back here today, so I'm gonna turn the heat up a little bit. 
Um, but I'm gonna spend a little bit of time to eat some lunch and just relaxing and maybe looking at some more patterns for Mr. Ray's hat. So I'll check back in with y'all in a little bit. Well, I'm finishing up the um, hem on my Hope dress. I've got the pockets put in, so I got the bodice put together. So all I have left to do is put the elastics in the cuffs and then um, gather the skirt and attach it to the bodice. So I think that's where we'll end it for today. And I will see you guys tomorrow. Thanks for watching. Bye.